Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration Metal Works, and in this week's video, we're going to work on one of the drawings from Titans of CNC Academy. So we're going to work on Lesson 1M, which is this guy right here. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have been following this or not, but uh, Titan, uh, Titan Gilroy from uh, Titans of CNC has put out an academy online, and it's sponsored by a lot of uh, great folks. Um, Fusion 360, you know, so Autodesk is one of the sponsors. Um, and all kinds of great sponsors, right? But, um, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about what it is and what it's doing and um, why I support it. So, now I'm not directly supporting it, but I'm you know, sharing as much as I possibly can about it because I think it's a great, uh, great setup. So, I try and recognize the fact that you've got to be able to learn how to be a machinist if we're going to bring manufacturing back to the U.S. But on top of that, in order to do it, uh, you've got to be able to do it effectively and efficiently. And so it's not just about knowing how to run the machine, but it's how to get the most out of those machines so that you're getting the most out of your equipment in general, brings your prices down, your cost per piece down, which means you can compete more effectively on the market. That being said, he's walking you through a lot of different things, right? And so um, for folks who just want to learn how to be more efficient or more effective at doing the CAD or the CAM, He's taking you through that. He's got a series of lessons that are built out that walk you through how to do that. And uh, the first one, uh, lesson 1M, makes this little guy right here. Let's get a close up look here. There you go. My shininess here. All right. So when he does his video, he walks you through it. And I'm not sure that I necessarily agree with everything that he does, but that's okay because we're all going to have different things. And you know what? I learned some things from him about how to do this as well. The other thing that uh, I got out of this, and you know, I'm a big proponent of professional development, and you know, yeah, I can make parts all day long. But the fact that you know I had to go through and try and make this particular part made me think about things a little bit differently. And especially since I was doing it on my Tormach, I was doing it on my little 440, not the Haas, right? not the BF2 that you kind of see behind me over there, right? Doing it on the on the 440. Now to give you an idea. Uh, how it went. When Titan did his first run, he did it at what he considered to be fairly modest feeds and speeds, and it took him about nine minutes to get the first operation done. Um, now this was on a VF2 super speed he was doing it on, but he was doing it really modest, and it was about nine minutes. Um, it took me closer to 14 to get that first operation done, right, in about as optimized a method as I could, because this guy, this is my final one, right, but Frankly, as everything falls, it's not the only one I made. Right? I did lots of these things before I got to that one. And what I did was, excuse me, I dropped the, uh, I dropped my phone, which is controlling my GoPro right now. So yeah also showed me what was in front of what's not. So let's get back at it. Like I was saying, oh, sorry about that. I compared different methods, right? So I this forced me to to really focus on what was most effective on my machine, on that little machine, not necessarily what's best practices overall. Um, in this final version, I actually told it to go down and do half inch cuts. Well. I kind of worked my way up to it because first I did um, half of the tool diameter at a higher uh, feed, and then I went to tool diameter, then I went to half, and then I did a full full length, you know, three three quarter inch depth of cut, and I found that at full depth of cut, the machine stalled on me. Right, it just wasn't. I didn't have the horsepower to do it, or I was taking such shallow cuts that I wasn't really engaging the cutter. Right, and that's not good either. Right, we don't want to baby these cutters. So, uh, yeah, I eventually I settled on, you know, I figured out that I could do it in about uh, two. Oh, the other thing that I did, and um, you guys may have noticed it because I'm going to, I'll probably have the video running while I'm doing this so it doesn't make the video too long. The first thing I did when I get my raw stock in here is I actually just do a ramp contour to get the stock close. Because one thing that I found is if the stock is cut at an angle or it's crooked or anything like that and you're pushing the machine close to that envelope of what it can and can't do 
you'll stall it, right? It's it's too easy just to you know have a problem where all of a sudden it's engaging instead of uh, five percent uh, step over, it's actually engaging thirty percent step over, right? Which is unacceptable. So I have it do that contour. Yeah, I know I could have gone to finish size right then if I wanted to, but I chose not to because I'm letting. Um, it's a real fast operation to get it close, but then once it's at that point, Fusion is smart, it uses REST machining, it knows where it should be, and then it can make its adjustments from there. So uh, yeah, it, it actually worked out really well. It added about a minute, like 40 some seconds to the cycle time, but frankly, that's not that much, right? Um, yeah, it adds up when you're doing large production runs, but in this case, because I know I'm getting material that's not squared up and I don't have somebody to do that for me, it was easier for me to put that routine in than not. So uh, the other thing I did in here, uh, you'll see, so it starts out, I do the contour, then I have it do um, a 3D adaptive, and I let it come in. Um, again, I'm doing down to a half, right, half inch, which is this, this floor here, right? Um, so it go, does that, it comes in, it does, uh, it does all its uh, adaptive roughing, cleans everything out, then you'll see it comes in and does a, a nice contour finish. But then you'll notice it comes back in and does the floor. Here's why. When I'm pushing that cutter, it's flexing a little bit, and the floor was not finishing. I don't know if you guys even able to see it. There you go. You guys can see. The floor was not finishing without that. So I learned that pushing the machine at that point you're pushing it to, you know, it's not a terribly heavy load when you're comparing it to big machines, but for the machine I was at, I'm on, pushing it at that point is probably just enough flex to where it was leaving about, you know, somewhere between seven, no, it was seven thousandths, right, pretty consistently. I know at those speeds and speeds, I was getting seven thousandths excess on the floor. So when I came around and did my contour at one thousandth above, it was leaving me about six thousandths of material sitting there. So by doing that horizontal path to come in and clean up the floor, cleans all that up and we're good to go. Uh, okay, the other things that I did that were a little unconventional. I did my facing last, right? So I came in, I did all the cleanup, then I came in and did my chamfers, which are kind of heavy sounding when I'm doing it. That's 50 inches a minute coming around doing these chamfers, right? Uh, so I did all my chamfers, did all my spotting. My spotting also included all of my um, chamfers for the drills. And I drilled and thread milled. I even turned off coolant uh, so you guys could see the thread mill happening on one of these, um, right? And then I came in and did my surfacing. Well, why do you think I did my facing pass last? Any guesses? Of course, you're not going to answer me now. But I, I did that because I didn't want to have to go in and change my belt, or my which which uh, pulley I was on on the 440. So at 25 or 2500 RPM, I don't have a whole lot of Torque, right? So by removing most of the material in here, as it's coming in and facing that, it's not working that hard. It's just got to get across here and across here. Yeah, it's an interrupted cut, but I got a really, really nice surface finish on that. I don't know how well you guys can see that or not, right? So once that's done, flip it over, right? And again, I hogged off most of the material, and I used the hog off. I shear, I used the shear hog to get most of the you know roughing the material off, right? Um, so got that off, and then I left about I left five thousandths on there to do a nice finish pass, so I get that nice, you know, that nice finish that the fly, the super fly gives you, right? And then I came around and did the chamfer on it because it was called out in the print that it was a uh, ten thousandths chamfer typical, if I remember correctly. So all in all, with the two operations and everything you know going at the speeds that I could do. It came in at 18 minutes to make this part fully. Now, when uh, Titan did his on the VF2, it was nine minutes, but he was only doing the one operation. He didn't actually flip into the other side. Still, I mean, decking it, because he's got um, you know, a nice face mill, and it probably would have only added another minute, maybe, right? Uh, so let's say 10 minutes to my 18. But that little machine can kick out parts like this all day long. And don't let it fool you, because I've made you know, hundreds and hundreds of these handles that you guys have seen me on that little on that little machine, so you don't need a big fancy machine to do this. Okay, well let's wrap this up. It's a pretty long video, I know, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've tried and get some you know feeds and speeds and things like that on the screen for you, so you guys know what I was doing. 
Uh, so for those of you who have a smaller machine, you get an idea of what I was running this at. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, thanks again to my folks on Patreon. I've got an update coming here shortly. It's been an up and down summer, and uh, uh, hopefully I'll have some, some fun stuff uh, to uh, to announce to everybody soon. But uh, you know, for, for now, I'm keeping some of that stuff on Patreon. Uh, but uh, thanks again for, for those of you who are supporting me there. And with that, I'll see you again soon.